I am being wise by withholding my opinion. Correct. And a lot, a lot of cases, because I conduct business on an international scale, mm -hmm. I oftentimes have benefactors on both sides. Whoa, African Andrew Tate. How does that make you feel? <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> if my boy comes back home and cries to me that he got bullied, he will cry again. <laughs>
I can handle the heat, mm. but why do I want that stress? I don't right. want to wake up to 10,000, you know, replies because one, I mean, if, if, I'm sure you said the same thing online, you go and somebody posts something about, it could be about anything, about a dog, a cat, it could be a war, whatever it is. And all the comments are echoes of each other. Correct. Oh, how could he? I'm whatever. I'm banning. I'm this in the app. I'm I'm I'm, I'm boycotting. I'm like, motherfuckers. Do you even ask how we got there? Thank you. Like, do you even try to put yourself in that person's shoes yeah. just to understand their chain of thought? Like, it's crazy. We 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 all talk about therapy and mental health, but the one avenue where we can actually showcase that love is where we hate each other the most. And we have this crazy boycott culture now. I mm. want to slap people in the face. It's it's, it's stupid. I mean, they're setting things that mm. make sense. True, but it it almost never works. It's true. Boycotting is only cool online. Mm. When you want to sound nice, you want to sound like, fancy. oh, I'm fancy. Keep you're not going to change warrior. nothing. In fact, if anything, mm -hmm. if that company does lose, mm. you're not punishing the company. You're punishing the 2,000 staff that will get laid off. <laughs> My friend, we're not even 10 minutes into the podcast and the gems are dropping. Mm. So I feel so, especially when you have all these, and it, it becomes, a, it becomes a, a slippery slope because a lot of times the cause mm. seems justified. For boycotting. Mm -hmm. Seems. And I use the word seems very sensitively because I use the word seems because a lot of times, I, pretty much every time, when there's a reason for one group of people to boycott someone, mm -hmm. there's a reason for another group to actually go and support them. 110%. Always. I always. mean, it could be whether it's politics, it's religion, whatever it is, there's always someone. The most And politics and religion are the most sensitive topics. It can divide a, a, a home. I want to add a third one as well. Tell me. Sports. Oh my God, let's not go there. Let's, let's not, let's sports, <laughs> sports is politics and religion. If politics and religion gave birth to a child, it'll be sports. I love that. That Honestly. is so true because those are Honestly. the three topics oh, yes. that I avoid like the plague. Oh my God, it is. It, I, I like to use sports because sports is harmlessly provocative. Mm. It is not, you can't, you can't place my character mm. and dogma around what team I hate or love. True. Or my comment about a particular, you know, player or team or coach or year or whatever. Pfft, that's your problem. That's it's your merely problem. just competitive analysis. True. But then when you talk about religion and politics, Whoa. people attach your entire being. Your entire existence. To who you support and your not support. Your lineage. Absolutely. They will dig up your family and oh understand God. your values 100%. and how you were brought up. 100%. And resurrect your trauma and then connect it to this so one statement that you just made. Oh, for sure. It's very true. It's really crazy. So I try to avoid sports. I love it. It's nice, nice giggle, you know, <laughs> trigger you know, a little bit. But, a little bit. But politics and religion, I would never touch it no matter what. I don't even post, even when I know what my opinions are, I don't even post anything that has to do with anything political. Mm. Unless it's something that could be a parody or humor mm. and humor that would not seem in any way, shape or form uh, uh, like I'm siding with anything. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people say, oh, but if you stand for nothing, do you, if you don't stand for something, you stand for nothing. nothing. That's not true. That's not true. I am being wise by withholding my opinion. Correct. And a lot, a lot of cases, because I conduct business on an international scale, mm -hmm. I oftentimes have benefactors on both sides. Whoa, how do you tether the line? I just don't, I just walk on the other side of the room. <laughs> the fence is here, <laughs> I'm there. Honestly, so I, I, I don't, I, I, it's, it's a very difficult mm. thing for most people, but for me it's very simple because mm. the reality is it could be an elephant in the room mm -hmm. if you want it to be an elephant in the room, but if you can avoid things, you can avoid things. I didn't have a day. Every politician is a businessman. Facts. Every country is theoretically a business. Do you know this is the statement, for lack of a better word, that made me fall in love with you and your content? Because you have this ability to make the most complex information relatable to like a three-year-old. And when I saw that video pop up on my For You page, I was like, who is this guy? And that was just the, and I went in and there was consistency and I could see more and more, like you made me go into like a tunnel. Yeah. And I was like, okay, he deserves a follow. And I damn. was like, God Bang damn, on. it's been, it's been interesting to just watch your journey. Thank you. And uh, I guess the first question that I would like to ask, considering uh, where we are, is how did you become the unofficial official Dubai ambassador? I just genuinely fucking love the city mm. with all my heart. Mm. There's no, no city I've lived in, visited, or Nigeria, where I'm from, the whole country. There's nowhere. Mm. 
that I've stepped my foot or plan to step my foot that has ever made me feel the way the city makes me feel, this country, mm. the way it makes me feel. And that, it just comes from a very, the number one thing I keep getting is, oh, Uncle Tom, sell out. How much mm-hmm. are they paying you? I'm like, bro, I wish they, they don't need to pay me. True. If they pay me, great. If they don't, fine. I spend money on my own podcast. I spend money to put that message out there. True. Because every single word is raw. I don't, as you know, we don't, we didn't plan this podcast. I, and I have to applaud you for that because the one area that I'm struggling, you people think that running a podcast is easy. They I do. dare you, start your own. Let's see <laughs> how far you can get. I dare you. All those people, and I'm sorry, I'm going to rant a little bit. Um, they've kind of, Please. I could understand where you're coming from when people tell you, oh, sell out, because that's the same message I get from yeah. my community. Yeah. Oh, she thinks she's a Nigerian ambassador. How come she hasn't bagged a Nigerian man to marry her? I'm like... Even Jesus Christ was not accepted in his own home. Even Muhammad had to move from Mecca to Medina. Maybe that is my calling. Let me do my thing. Allow me to prosper and watch me win. Thank you. Back Amen to, you to that. being the unofficial, official ambassador. Amen to that. Sorry, I, I, I just had to get that out of my No, chest. please, Wyoming. I'm, I'm very happy you did because yeah. uh, I can relate to that. Mm-hmm. I can relate to that. So, and besides being the unofficial, official uh, ambassador of Dubai, I literally love how you manage yourself as a brand. I see you walking into rooms where you're literally, for lack of a better word, the only black person. But you are so comfortable, you dominate, right? So if I was to pick a a script from your book with regards to networking, because I feel like I'm more of an ambivert. Okay. I'm very good in spaces, but I also need that time to be alone. Same. Right? I'm purely, I'm 100% extrovert and 100% introvert. I'm, I'm, I'm 100% ambivert. Nice. Absolutely. It would never show through your personality. Really? Honestly. Right. Were you thinking more of an extrovert? Yes. I would go for that for sure. I'm just, I always say I'm just as comfortable alone on the sofa with a bowl of Kellogg's Frosties mm-hmm. as I am in the middle of a stadium with 10,000 people. Wow. Feels it's a slight different feeling. Mm-hmm. One is more calm. One is more erratic. But I feel the same level of comfort. Kellogg's free endorsement from you right there. The unofficial official ambassador just mentioned his favorite cereal. <laughs> 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 Love that. <laughs> so, yeah. so what do you do to wind down? Like just to calm and like charge your power bank? What's like your idea of a chill day? I do a few things. Okay. One is, I always say, I do two things, two okay. main things. My vacation starts when this goes like that and mm. silent and stays in the other room to study. Mm. That's I don't need to travel 10,000 kilometers per hour, 10,000 kilometers, you know, to on vacation to do anything. Mm-hmm. I just need to do that. Mm. And I'm unwinding already. Wow. Because the moment I pick that up, it's an endless, it's a bottomless pit of people trying to snag a, a piece of, you. of me every, every from everywhere. It could be personal, it could be <clears throat> family related, it could be um, casual, personal, it could be work, it could be new inquiries, it could be all at the same time. Okay. And it never <clears throat> ends. My WhatsApp got banned a few days ago, uh, almost two weeks ago. Wow. WhatsApp has been misbehaving lately. That's a lot true. of people have complained. My agents, uh, brokers have been complaining about it too. Yeah. I have a friend of mine <clears throat> who's actually trying to make an international call and she had to activate her VPN. And I don't know, she was responding on WhatsApp messages and they just blocked her account. They, lately, they had, a, they had a big bug. That, mm. they probably, it's probably a bug because there's some people that have, and for me, there's no justification mm. because I'm not messaging, I don't do any cold messages. I, I only message clients who reach out. Interesting. So inbound. I'm like, inbound. I'm like, yeah. so what the hell are you guys, you know, True. what violation is there? True. You know, so I don't know. Anyways, we'll fish and find out. Oh, yeah. Time Soon. will tell. Soon. So today I want to get to know you from a different aspect. Okay. And allow me to play a little game. Okay. Have you heard of psychogeometrics? Not necessarily, no. Interesting. I love it when we educate, empower, and entertain. Those are the three values of Dubai diastory. So I'm going to show you a picture. Okay. And at first glance, I just need you to tell me which shape you resonate with the most. Okay? I'm going to show you the picture. Okay. Okay. I'm going to show the picture. I'll send it to production so that they can add it. So tell me, which shape spoke to you the most? The orange circle. Interesting. Do you want me to read you the qualities of a circle? Tell me. Let's see if it's actually in line. 
Uh huh. Sorry. This is the part where I did not structure my content properly, but I got it. <laughs> okay. So a circle um, likes harmony, nurturing, caretaker, loves people, and loves to solve problems, problems that make a difference, always stand out, can be often misunderstood, but always come from a great place at heart. Bang on. God damn. Bang on. Okay. Okay. So like word for word, bang on. So you're a circle. I am a circle. Oh, wow. A circle with a very big personality. Massive. <laughs> More like red. <laughs> like atomic a red, red. A red circle. <laughs> <laughs> so if you were to pick a secondary shape, let me just go back to the image. What would that be? It would be the zigzag red. A squiggle. Oh, now it makes sense. <laughs> that's, that's definitely me as well. Squiggles are actually known for their creativity. Okay. They're boundless minds. Okay. They don't like being put in a box. Okay. And uh, they can be slightly erratic in decision making. Okay. But they prefer not to dig deep to know the pros and cons. They would just rather go with their gut. Okay. So, so the whole essence of psychogeometrics is just to show like color and shapes and how quickly your brain can actually pick so up a shape. Interesting. Interesting. Yay. Those are quite right too. Nice. So you're a circle and a squiggle. Yep. I am quite the opposite. I am more of a triangle and a squiggle. Interesting. But my primary personality. So the first one that you resonate with is your primary personality. And mm -hmm. then obviously you have left and right brain. So your secondary personality would be the squiggle. So for me, my okay. primary is the squiggle. Okay. <laughs> and the triangle is my secondary personality, which means I still have some aspects of the triangle that I need to work on okay. to actually like complete my shapes. Interesting. That is very interesting. I'm glad. I'm going to use that. Interesting. I'm definitely going to share more details with you. I'm boring that for sure. <laughs> no, I love it. Thank you. Interesting. Okay, cool. So next question, I guess. We're just going to try and have a conversation here. Trust me, this is, not, this is us having dialogue. Of course. And I must say, you're actually one of the guests that has eased into the conversation of, off the bat. So this feels replenishing on both sides. Thank you very Appreciate much. Um, weird one, because obviously I know your love for Dubai. But if you were not here, where would you rather be? Saudi. Saudi. Because mm. it's close to Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I was expecting you to say? Dubai. <laughs> I mean, but for the sake for the sake of the for the sake thing. of you know, it's yeah. like if you don't have a red car, what other color would you have? Correct. Uh, yeah, Saudi, but also because Saudi is probably the only one that has the next the potential to be the next Dubai, correct? Or to meet Dubai standards mm. or replicate what Dubai has accomplished and probably scale that further. Whatever that is, Saudi is probably the next best place. In some rooms and quarters, they actually feel um, like Saudi slept in its poten on its potential for a very long time. And yes, it's great that they've woken to the beat of their own drum right now. Um, do you agree or disagree with the statement? Oh, I agree. You agree? Um, MBS is crazy. I love him. I love it. His brain is, is, is like... He is, oof, he is a lunatic. True. In a good way. He's Delulu. Oh my God. You have to be. Because Lulu. if, he, exactly. If he, you cannot wake up trying to fit into the box that others have drawn for you and mm. be a part of the norm and the status quo and enact any change. True. He literally picked the entire can, the box that is Saudi, flipped it upside down, shook the shit out of that box, <laughs> and then flicked it back, threw the box away, True. and then decided I want to build a whole new box now. And I choose who goes in, who doesn't go in. And what the rules are, the colors of the box, what walls are going to be used to build them. It's crazy what he has done and what he's about to do because this is still just the beginning. True, the tip and of the And look iceberg. what they've done. Wow. In just that short period of time. Whoa. That's why I really believe Saudi has a potential. If anything, I can almost see myself in the next five years mm. and I never like saying, making that statement because I never like to even go crazy that far. Mm -hmm. um, but next five years, I can see myself shuttling between Saudi and UAE. Nice. Back and forth. Mm. Probably a house there, house here, stuff going on there, stuff going on here. Definitely, I can see that being the perfect. I already you know, feel like marriage. it would be way easier when we have that, like um, the tube that travels at a neck breaking speed. Yeah. I can't remember the it name. What, three right hours now. Saudi, one Wait. and a half hour, whatever it is. Done. And we are there. Yeah. Great. Okay. Absolutely. Um, what else? Let's see what I have here. All right. Um, 
Improving humankind through innovation. Yes. I heard you say that this is the cornerstone of all the businesses that you start. Correct. Interesting. Where did hum when did humanity surpass like profit for you? Because it's very few entrepreneurs that I've spoken to who put humanity before the paycheck. Okay, a little bit to correct. Humanity has not surpassed profit to me. They're both <laughs> They're in tandem. <laughs> they're, they're, they're right next to each other. In fact, they're not next to each other. Okay. I've interwoven them together. Mm. Right? So I always believe when you actually set out with, I always say this, one, my fav, one of my favorite quotes is, seeing isn't believing, believing is seeing. Mm. Right? Mm. It's not what you're looking for. You. It's, not, it's, not, it's not what you see that you'd actually find. It's what you're looking for. It's like I always give the example of, you want to buy a red Range Rover. Mm. Your neighbor has had two red Range Rovers and there have been 50 red Range Rovers in your community, Facts. but you haven't seen all 50 True. until you decide you want to buy a red Range Rover, True. right? So everything has always been there, but the more you decide, you know what? Now I really want this. Mm. It's automatic. Your brain starts to, your entire subconscious starts to source those things out. True. And the same thing applies to when you're looking out for something, right? Now, why am I saying this? People who have convinced themselves and told themselves they're gonna that it's impossible to chase profit without humanity mm -hmm. or humanity without profit end up rich and empty, empty or broke and feeling accomplished. I don't want to be broke and accomplished. Most of them and I don't want to be rich and empty. I want to be both. Mm. Right? So I believe when you tell yourself it is possible to have all the wealth in the world, all the health in the world, all the good shit, materialistic mm -hmm. and Materialistic things are very important. True. Like, I don't want to, I'm going to bust all your fucking bubbles. <laughs> all this bullshit about, oh, my God, fuck that. your shit. <laughs> There's no such thing as money is bad for you. True. If you think that's bad for you, go and try to pay for a cancer treatment. True. With love yeah, and abundance. care. Good luck with that. And followers, no offense. Like, how would you actually be generous to somebody who needs things that you have resources for without the resources. Mm. So let's assume that you actually want to even forget about yourself. You want to eat bread and tea all day for the rest of your life, no problem. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to actually help, your grandmother wakes up in the morning and you're going to, your mother or your sister wakes up in the morning and she has a tumor that has no medical insurance to cover. How are you going to cover that? You get a fucking plane, you put on that plane, you fly out to the best medical center in the world and they fix it. True. That's why you need money. Mm -hmm. Now you've used that money for a good cause. Mm -hmm but it's still money nonetheless. Right. So it's all, like I said, back to what I was saying again, I've made up my mind that I'm going to interweave both the humanity mm -hmm. and the resource chasing mm -hmm. to accomplish one single organism. Not one or the other, not one beside the other, one organism. And that's why improving humankind using innovation has been structured to be, and what is innovation, right? Innovation just means doing something better. Mm. In the time of walking, the person who got smart enough to sit on the back of a donkey or a horse or a camel, that was innovation. True. In time of fist fights, the guy who built a bow and an arrow, that was innovation. True. Right? So no matter how one look at it, innovation just means something is done better. Mm. Your phone used to be that big. True. Right? And it couldn't with fit a in the battery. With a battery. Mm -hmm. Innovation is it's more portable. True. It's still a phone. And it does so much more. So much more. Mm. It's all, and these things have grown very, 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 very infinitesimally incremental. True. They, they haven't grown, a lot of things haven't grown very sporadically overnight. It's just been somebody that has felt one itch and is like, let me just scratch that itch. Let me just wiggle in that direction. Mm. And now wireless phones exist. Mm. Not the wired phones anymore, right? Mm. And now instead of big bulky tube plastic or rubber buttons, now it's touchscreen. Touch I remember the first time I saw an iPhone, I was thinking it was a cycle that... <laughs> Decided we have to press the screen. I was so pissed off because the Nokia and the typing yeah. was like therapy We just mastered ABC typing. Like I one, know. two, three. I could do that in my sleep in one hand. <laughs> and now I have to type QWERTY. And then beyond that, after Blackberry, we have to do on the screen? Yes, on With the no screen. feedback? <laughs> Again, bottom line is, mm -hmm. it's all innovation. Interesting. And it has changed our lives. Mm -hmm. And it has been not at the expense of making money. Mm -hmm. Apple is now the most valued thing on the planet. Right. Right? They're being innovative. They're changing and improving lives. Mm -hmm. And they're making money at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that's why that really has truly been the cornerstone of my life, where it's, it's a fusion. It's a perfect marriage, symbiosis 
of both of those organisms. Okay, yeah. I love that. I absolutely, you've literally just like wrapped everything that I wanted to talk about in one statement. The gift of gab, guys. <laughs> the gift of gab, you know? I've met my match today. And I'm excited about this. Okay, so since we're in the space of innovation and we've just talked about that there's nothing new under the sun and everything is baby steps building from the past into the future. Um, content creation has changed in the last six months. Yes. And I think Dubai is evidence of that because every day there's a new podcasting studio that's popping for sure. up. For sure. Um, I don't know if you've had the chance to think about podcasting versus influencing. Yes. Of course, I think I know where you lean. Oh, 100%. Towards. I am not an influencer. <laughs> I don't, uh, my videos just happen to go viral. Uh -huh. That's it. You know, I don't consider myself an influencer at all. Mm -hmm. Now, by definition, if what I say influences someone, then I guess by definition, yes. Mm -hmm. But no, I'm not. In fact, I do. I, I get approached by brands every other day. Mm -hmm. I turned. I turned down nine out of ten brands that I actually will receive money from. In fact, a lot of brands have reached out to me and said, "We're going to pay you," and I've said, "No, I don't want you to pay me." Mm -hmm. Here is. A, I want to actually remodel your business, mm -hmm. and here is an actual idea I'm going to offer to you on how we're going to work together. Wow! It's going to improve you better, improve things for you much better, and I'm going to make a hell of a lot more. I'm a businessman. I've never thought of it that way. Yeah. You know, for me, my conversation always ends where I'm just like generous, uh, genuine, yeah. and I'm like, I don't think we're fit for each other. Yeah. But I've never thought of adding value oh, and presenting a different problem with a solution. 100%. Because at the end of the day, what is it? Every company, welcome. Every company just wants to make more money. They want to make mm -hmm. more sales, generate more attention, more leads, whatever their goals are. Mm -hmm. And if you can sort of find a way that you now become, you just automatically, you promote yourself from that one-time influencer to a business consultant mm -hmm. by just dropping the value. Mm. Don't, they don't, they don't, nobody will ask for it. Just drop it and walk away mm. and then let them come chasing after you. Wow. I'm not saying it's a gimmick or a game or a scheme or whatever, but it's just the way it is. Because when somebody sees, hold on a minute, we've approached this girl, mm. vet, to make a video and she's just giving us ideas that would actually give us a hundred times more value. Now, all of, all of a sudden, a vet is worth on and times more. True. I can't actually say how much I get paid to do videos because I don't get paid for just the videos. I get paid for videos, consultancy, performance based, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I have a lot more power offline than I do online. True. My social media is just my diary. Mm. My relationships are fully offline. I can get so much more on a WhatsApp in one hour than people can do with a hundred man team for a month. Mm. Right? Just by reaching out to the right people, but also being resourceful enough to be so, as you said, outward thinking or outside the box thinking Out of the right box. there's no box for there is no box <laughs> like that's my, my that's my since i was 12 or 14 years old mm -hmm. i always say think outside the box mm -hmm. screw that there is no box, no box. and then when, when i get my new office i'm gonna print that on the big once you walk in the office that's the first thing i'm gonna get it for you please there is no box there you go yeah you know that's, and the that's tea literally in it. day is for tony <laughs> <laughs> amen okay so a little bit just to get to know you a little bit better. Yeah. Um, what's like the one movie you can watch again and again and again? <sighs> there are a few. There are a few? Let's go through them. There are a few, my God. There's Thomas Crown Affair. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. With P.S. Brosnan. Yes. The old one is... Legend. Uh, I kind of like the old one. Yeah, the story is not bad. Production quality is shit. Yeah, true. That's, uh, it becomes unbearable. Sound quality wasn't that good. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm a Taurus, so I like aesthetically appealing things, right? Mm. Uh, Thomas Crown Affair, mm -hmm. Dark Knight. I haven't watched that one. Really? Yeah. Oh my god, Dark. Batman Dark Knight. There and there's Bat. There's uh, so there, there are three of them. There's Batman Begins, I think, yes. if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Then there's the Dark Knight, mm -hmm. and then there's that's uh, Christopher Bale, right? I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bale, 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 right? And then Dark Knight, and then uh, Dark Knight, and mm -hmm. Dark Knight Rises. Mm -hmm. Any of these? And then there's Superman. Mm. Oh, yes. It's interesting, your infinite relation with power. Oh, yes. And then there's Iron Man. And Iron Man again. It's, it's really... <laughs> I can sense a theme already. Oh, there's a theme. <laughs> I, I actually sat down and I thought to myself, <laughs> what is it about these motherfuckers? And I realized they all actually fall in the same segment. Mm -hmm. Thomas Affair. Thomas Crown was, was a billionaire. True. Extremely intelligent, witty charismatic, mind-bendingly creative genius. Brutal as well. Brutal. Which is important. Oh, absolutely. You know, I personally ruthless. believe that when you achieve a certain level of success, 
it is impossible to avoid the narcissistic state. You know, and honestly, I, 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 even before that, I think you have to be to a certain level narcissistic to even be able to accomplish that level of result because True. otherwise you just get very complacent and content with little. Mm. So you won't even get it that far. True. Without that level of, fuck you, I deserve more, more than you. True. And the, the world has really come to a place where it's like, oh, a participation medal, just yes. show up and do oh, your best. Fuck your best. I really hate like the other it's day, we nonsense. Had, I had a whole blown fight with my friend who's just starting a nursery school. Yeah. And she was doing the graduation and she's like, yeah, we have the top three candidates, but we also have to give certificates to the other kids. It's nonsense. I was like, nah, I didn't get a participation nonsense. certificate. And I, that made you want those medals more. Exactly. That's what gave me the craving. Absolutely. That's what made me be more attentive during tuition, even though I hated what I was doing, but that competitive yep. factor is what keeps Absolutely. us alive. I mean, and, and anybody who goes around talking this nonsense of participation medals and all this rubbish, mm. they always envy those who actually just kick ass. Correct. Because the reality is your best sucks if it cannot beat my best. Mm. Therefore, you are so mediocre because if I'm not even the best True. and there's somebody better mm -hmm. and your best is still below my best, what the fuck are you doing here? It is what it it's is. It's bullshit. It you know, is. this is why, and, and people always lie to themselves because when you now look at the world's affinity for competitive sports, mm -hmm. you now really mm -hmm. see humanity's true character. And I think we saw that yesterday. Oh, one, of, <laughs> one of many. You know, when you look at UFC, you look at basketball, like true. we are, there's nothing that brings people together more than sports. True. And that's because whether people like it or not, that's a projection of the competitiveness that we have as human beings. True. There's nothing that, pff, nothing, nothing, nothing is more important than competition. And I don't think innovation would even be a word without competition. Exactly. Yes. yes. Like whenever there's a monopoly, things get stagnant, things mm -hmm. get stale. True. You need to know Jack next door might do this and True. take this away from you. True. So I got to wake up in the morning and I got to show up. And, and make up. sure things are being done right. Mm -hmm. It's the only way. So it's so necessary. And then you waste man, lazy waste man trying to look for the easy way out. Oh, but I tried my best. Shut the fuck up. Your best isn't good enough. There's nobody was actually honest enough to tell you mm -hmm. that you suck. And you know, that has been a very painful realization for me because for very long, um, I was in tech. And yeah. I, in my 20s, I worked for one company for 11 years. Oof. And it got to a point where it was like everyday routine. Like yeah. I could do it with my eyes closed. Yeah. And then there was this, uh, I think it was just like the Gen Zs were now getting into the workplace. Okay. And since I was working in HR, everyone was complaining, oh, I don't want to hire Gen Z. They quit. They don't do this. They don't do that. But in that, I recruited for one other tech company. And I hired a Gen Z lady, brilliant lady. And in five years, she achieved what I had done in 11. <laughs> and that was a massive wake-up call for me. And I was like, Big slap. I am stuck in a rut. Yeah. And I've come to realize in this era, which we live in right now, legacy is great, but legacy is not going to take you where you're going. You can't say, oh, I was great at this 10 years ago. I was top sales in this department from this year to this year. No. What are you doing today? You know, it's so funny you use our word legacy because this is where I play with black people. Thank you. Let's go there. This is where I am the biggest enemy of black people. Mm -hmm. When they refuse to let go of old, useless, unrelated, bullshit, historical things that they... Mm -hmm try so hard and go uh, out of their own way to link to. What do I mean? This legacy is being thrown around so much. Mm. And the truth is, it's actually being used by those who are not even doing enough. True. And they hold on to their forefathers who were actually moving their asses, walking 15 to 50 kilometers a day, mm -hmm. which is hardship. True. Like I say, right? Strong men create weak times, soft times, that create weak men, that create hard times, that create strong men, and the loop goes. Please just repeat that again. Strong I don't know men. I need to bring out my notebook. You have a. You can replay this, right? <laughs> strong can. men create easy times. Mm -hmm. That create weak mm -hmm. men. That create hard times. That create strong men. So it's a vicious. cycle. It's a vicious cycle. So even what we're having in terms of generational battles right now, oh, millennials, bread, Gen Zs, and all Gen Zs are ahead. Nonsense. It is part of the vicious cycle. It is all, it's, it's a necessary cycle. That's why a lot of times, whether it's war or it's politics, there, there are a lot of things that I just look back and just say, human nature. Mm. I, saw, I, saw, I saw a post the other day on, on, um, on Instagram and someone was complaining about 
oh my God, how can somebody be charging people from Palestine to cross the border? I empathize, mm. but I just commented, human nature. Human nature. Got like 20,000 likes mm. and 500,000 hates. Like, how can he be? I'm like, are you mad at me that I said human nature? Oh, or are you mad you, at the human nature? Thank you. Like, you who's your enemy you here? Know, I'm that, saying the truth. That's the truth. Yeah. Because the truth of the matter is, mm. those who are offering the service need resources. True. And yes, some do take advantage and capitalize. True. But again, human nature. Mm -hmm. You cannot change that. Mm -hmm. You can't do anything about it. Whether or not you, and the funny thing is, even if 99% go in tandem and agree, let's not do this, it's always that Outlier. one guy. True. That will say lie. No, nope. no, 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 no. We do it like this. That's and true. I will take advantage. And that guy is always the most intelligent, most manipulative, most charismatic, creative son of a bitch. True. That could swindle the rest 99. Mm. And this is why democracy is a scam. Because the population or the majority's opinion is not always what's best. No. In fact, people, if, if, if majority, I, I, it was a skit, this uh, uh, stand-up comedy. Uh, what is his name? Gervais? Ricky Gervais, right? Oh, I love Ricky Gervais. Yeah, I love what he said. He was like, if majority population should be able to decide for the rest, mm -hmm. let's remove the don't drink bleach sign on bleach <laughs> and let's see what happens. Because <laughs> if people are so intelligent, True. why do we still yeah. say don't drink bleach? True. Or smoking kills you. Simple. Just, he's like, how about we just remove that? Mm. Let people actually drink it. Then whoever is mm -hmm. left, those are the ones that should make decisions for others. Mm -hmm. And you'll find 99% or 97% will die. Mm -hmm. And this, and anybody who, the people who invented democracy, they knew this. Because mm -hmm. the majority of people are herds. Right? The herd mentality is so, it's, it's, it's human, again, human nature. It's true. And it's so much easier to manipulate that majority. That's why they say, you know what? Let's create the scam of democracy because we Feminism. know we can, yeah, that nonsense. Let's go there. We can, <laughs> we can easily manipulate the majority of people mm. and we're going to get our way anyway. But let's make it look like it's fair. So yes. it's, everything is marketing and everything. perception. Toothpaste. Let me tell you the Everything. Mark Let me tell you the marketing scam that really got me. I'm a victim for this one. Feminism. Let's go there. And it's so sad because the older I get, yeah. the more I retreat into my inner nature. Yes. And it goes down to small things like when I look at a boy and I look at a girl, a boy is playing with G.I. Joe's, Legos, out eating worms and sand. And a girl is playing with dolls. She's playing house. And she's comfortable in that space. She might try and double everywhere, but at some point she will retreat to her true nature. Yeah. And then comes the Second World War, and men have gone to war, and they come back, uh, you know, injuries, dilapidated, mental health, and everything, yeah. and they cannot produce. And we have this so-called first world economies now that are surviving on what we owe them as third worlders. And at that point, slavery was at the tail end of everything. And then someone sat down and said, it's only the men who are going to war. There's women who are just sitting at home and doing nothing. That's not fair. That's not fair. Let's go and die too. You know? And then they said, oh, they want to be empowered. They want to feel seen. They want to feel heard. Let's glorify that. But at the end of the day, that gives us a chance to tax two people and not one. 100%. Of course. And I fell for the scam for so long. The entire education board, matriculation board, was invented by Rockefeller. Mm -hmm. He funded the entire education board in America to create workers for his factories. Mm. That is, he spearheaded, single-handedly spearheaded the education matriculation culture, mm. attestations, uh, 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 what do you call this? Um, uh, uh, Pre-entry -re -pre exams. Oh, for sure. Qualifications. qualifications. Uh, what's this exact word I'm looking for? Um, uh, uh, it'll, it'll come to me. No problem. Right? But he created all of that. Mm. Accreditation. Accreditation. They have, of course. Oh, you have to be accredited by this institution. And to who be determines the accreditation? The, oh, the guys who invented the fucking thing. Thank you. When you, when you look at the best schools in the world, mm. the biggest measurement lists are American lists True. or European lists. True. What do you see on those lists? American schools. Facts. Right? Take those kids, throw them in IIT in India, 
throw them in Uniport in River State, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Let's see how they come out. <laughs> Let's see how they come out. Let's see if they even survive. Let's start. They there. will run home. It's true. Fast. It's true. And it's not only because of the academic prerequisite or the the intelligence quotients prerequisite. It's really also the social social culture. Mm. There's the very drastically violent disparities mm. between the Western social culture and the Eastern, and also the Eastern, including Africa, including Asia. We don't do all that bullshit softness. Mm, that's true. Your kid get, listen, I have an eight-year-old son, okay? Aww. If my boy comes back home mm -hmm. and cries to me that he got bullied, he will cry again. <laughs> Now, that might be a little bit harsh. <laughs> it is what it is. But he might cry more than what that bully did to him. Because if he is not able to understand, mm. son, I am here for you to complain to. Mm. And that's a privilege. True. If, God forbid, I'm not here anymore. What's going to happen to you? Who are you going to cry to? <laughs> and now, that might seem very harsh. That might seem very, oh my God, well, maybe we oh, should teach them some better. We're operating in the participation oh era. Shut up. Like, oh, you're abusive. Fuck that is, up. you're giving him trauma. 100%. Like, any, any, a lot of time when I post some things, I get my, um, especially European children or European academicians. Mm -hmm. Oh, but a child should have, should only study for four hours in a day. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, really? Your child, not mine. So when your child studies four hours a day, how many people have studied four hours a day and have actually made something useful? Tell me, one person. The best lawyers, the best doctors mm. and highest earning professionals in the West are immigrants. So this is also now back to even me getting upset at black people mm. when they claim that America is so racist. I grew up in North America. I grew up in Canada. Mm -hmm. America is so racist america is so this mm -hmm. the west is so that i'm like guys even if everybody were all black if we're all black mm -hmm. or we're all white or all brown we're still going to discriminate each other it's true it's human nature it is if you think that i'm like well racism is your only problem and when i say this it pisses off a lot of people when you really think about it i'm like guys racism is just one type of human problem we are going to do it to each It's only racism if I'm white and you're black. It's true. If I'm black and you're black, what are you going to call it? <laughs> it's bullshit. Mm. Don't get me wrong. These things exist. And yes, somebody can hate you for your skin color. It is. But the truth is that in itself, the mind is a fluid object. That is only predicated on their limited knowledge and limited ideology on their past experiences. Mm. I always tell everybody, Nobody of value can be ignored. Mm. You can be hated. You can be disliked. They can be racist against you, mm. but they cannot ignore you. True. They cannot ignore you. Mm. And the thing I also find as a problem with black people is, and all over the world, Africans, American, African Americans, European, whatever it is, mm. they try to come up with this our people bullshit. Mm. There's a, there's a, what's the name? Is it Dr. Omar? There's an American doctor. He blocked me on Instagram because I called him <laughs> off. I called him, I called him out so many times for <laughs> bullshit. I'm, I told him like, bro, if you had a choice, the way you talk, he talks with so much aggression and violence. I'm like, mm. I'm like, bro, who hurt you? Were you raped? <laughs> who raped you when you were five years old or 10 years old? Mentally. Ment no, or physically. <laughs> because the way he talks, right? Mm. He's one of those, he's like, I'm a Pan-African. Shut the fuck up. You are a fucking extremist. Mm. You are as good as, Al-Qaeda, mm. with the ideologies you're installing in black people's minds because you should be teaching collaboration. Yeah. The reason the wealthy get wealthier is collaboration and information. It's true. It's I, not because they're fighting each other. You know, I saw a map the other day that showed um, dots. Yeah. And one one dot, one, one page had like dots of like white billionaires. Okay. And then one page had like dots of like black billionaires. In the white page... All the dots were connected. Yes. In the black page, Scramble. they were scrambled there and you far go. apart from each other. Bingo. That is exactly our problem. Mm. We do more damage to our. And it starts at the now. People can say, oh, these data are skewed or not. I believe it's about what? Under 20% of America are actually black. They commit over 80% of the crime. Mm. And that's what data says. That's what data says. 
Majority of the prison institutions have black incarcerated men. Now, people can look for justification and say whatever they want, but the truth is 99% of the, oh, he was an innocent bystander. When you always go back and watch the body cam, no, he was resisting arrest. Mm. He was fighting the police. He had a gun in his hand. He had meth in his mouth. What's this dude that died? Uh, uh, what's this one? I um, remember him um, uh, during the pandemic. Yeah, yes. the free, yeah. The, 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 everyone yeah. went crazy and black. And, uh, uh, was this BLM. BLM and Derek Chauvin and all that. And then we found out that it wasn't actually an innocent boy. Mm. He had criminal history, had almost killed a pregnant woman from, from vandalism and actually armed robbery. That's he bad. had all of that. There were four black people, four passengers in that car with, right? Three with him and him. Mm. How come three of them didn't die? They didn't resist arrest. They weren't fighting. Mm -hmm. The only reason why that officer stayed on him that long was because he kept resisting. Mm. And I, we saw the, the, the 45 or 50 minute long video. I don't know if you saw it. The other three guys were just standing by the wall. Yeah. Even when I was in Canada, when I drove, there was once I even drove without a driver's license. I didn't get my license. I was too young. I was like 17 or 18, whatever, in Toronto. I was driving my friend's car. Mm -hmm. He wasn't even in the car. It, so, they, in fact, they could claim I stole the car. They could do so many things. Mm. I, I'm willing to bet if that scenario had happened to most black people, they'll be in jail or dead. And the reason I say that is, first of all, humanity is humanity. And what do I mean? Mm. Human approach changes everything. You can have somebody who, you know, have you ever had those scenarios where somebody tells you, hey, this guy's an asshole, don't go to him, in like a queue of like 10 people, like customer service reps. But then your visit is the one that turns that guy's day around. Why? It's your aura, it's your energy, it's your politeness, it's your communication quality, it's respect. Simple pillars of society. Mm -hmm. Every time or most times a black person gets a, why are you guessed up? I know my rights. Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Why the fuck are you arguing? How many people? How many white people do you hear that make the news? Because they do very simple things. License or registration, please. Yeah, here, officer. How are you, mm -hmm. Francis? How's your day? Mm -hmm. Something as simple as that. Now, of course, they can always go either way. That doesn't guarantee anything. True. But I'm willing to bet my left nut. <laughs> that it will at least increase your tr your likelihood of Francis being a little more cordial towards you. True. And because we're all human beings. We are designed to connect. And the fact is when they're stereotyped, we say, oh, why are they being stereotyped? <sighs> human nature is built to recognize patterns. We're built as natural stereotype creating organisms. That's why it is how we identify patterns, mm. safety, danger. True. It's how we're built. True. So it's impossible for us not to profile each other and not to have Indians love curry. It's fucking true. It's true. Most black people, most athletes are black. It is it's true. 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 There's an actual biological difference between a black person and a white person. Epigenetic a woman, coding. There you go. A woman and a man. Identifying that black is black and white is white, a spade mm -hmm. is a spade, is not a crime. True. All that matters is what you do with it. It's the motive mm -hmm. and your end, end product, right? And this is where people, niggas need to be educated in their head. And mm -hmm. a hammer and nail needs to be, re people, they need, they need to be rewired. True. And it's a very simple thing. Not everybody pulling over is your enemy. And I think I can, I can summarize that by, by saying, not summarize, but continue the conversation by saying, number one, uh, first I'd like to ask you, to what extent do you agree with the statement, ego is not your amigo? based on what we have just said. To a large degree, yes. To a large degree, yeah. yes. But it can be, if it's, if it's done right, it can be your amigo too. Okay. So elaborate a little bit more on that. So I always believe that. So a new, what's the nuclear bomb, right? Mm -hmm. A nuclear bomb is oxygen, hydrogen, um, um, uranium, plutonium. Come they're, on, take us right? to school. <laughs> they're, they're, they're many factors. And these are all wrapped in aluminum shells, iron shells, the iron core. Then you have your power core and all that. The fact of the matter is, those things are only nuclear bombs when you put them together, together in a particular order. True. Right? Why am I saying that? Ego can be, is, is, a, is a mutable thing. Mm. And ego comes from many factors. Trauma, experience, mm. pleasures, mm -hmm. pain, um, uh, 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 position, mm. 
societal value and placement. Even your last name. Your last name. Mm. So many things. Mm. Your in fact horoscope. Horoscope. People can justify whatever they want into an True. ego. The fact of the matter is when you actually decompose or dissect your ego, mm. and you're able to realize, okay, the ego has all these facets. There's the pluses and there are the minuses. Mm. I want to discard the minuses and I want to use the pluses. Mm. Because why would I not be ego? Why, why would I not feel ego and pride? Because part of ego is pride. It is. Right? Yeah. Now, ego is pride, ego is stubbornness, ego is, you know, being principled. There, there are many things that actually go into the word ego. And not being scared to stand alone, even if the whole crowd is on the you other side. You need ego to be able to actually stand foot down when it matters and when you're mm. right. Mm. So ego can be your friend mm -hmm. if it's done right. And I always say greed, I made a video a while ago, months ago, mm -hmm. over a year ago. Greed is your friend. Mm -hmm. But then it's got to be used in a way that is sort of counterintuitive. And the way I say it is, if giving is receiving, I meaning the more you give, the more you receive. If you're greedy to receive, doesn't that mean you should give more? I mean, even in typical context, what you just did right now, if your hand is closed like this, how can you receive? How can you receive? You have no space. You have to open up. You have to open. You give. Yeah, no. And you receive. True. And that's greed because I want more. Mm. But like, like Tony Stark said, right? I have successfully privatized world peace. I will protect you at the pleasure of myself. You can count on me to pleasure myself. <laughs> Did you see that marriage? <laughs> <laughs> the benefit oh my God, of me, <laughs> the benefit of me pleasuring myself is you get protected. protected. Why are you complaining? Hmm. Everybody wins. My ego gets triggered. Mm. It gets tickled every day and you get protected. And you know, funny enough, if we actually look at it, there are some marriages right now that I know in my circle that have truly been formed out of that statement my pleasure protected you because then we fused and had a baby and automatically as a man i have to provide 100 damn 100 that hit me like a ton of rocks <laughs> i didn't see that it's coming. powerful whoa it's powerful and honestly if only we could actually fuse a bit of selflessness in our selfishness the world would be a much better Every place in moderation i think everything and, you, everything. and you, you, you can't have only the white you need the black too it's true you can't have only the clean it must be dirty it's true you need to see darkness you to must, appreciate the light must you have to when you go through a whiny bitch of a girlfriend or a partner <laughs> then you appreciate the peaceful girlfriend it's true when you go through a very very a shit shitty boss. girl a bad asshole a bastard who never had love as a true. child true then you appreciate the guy who's actually nurturing or the woman who's actually nurturing in fact in boss. the beginning it shocks you like huh how? Yeah. Why are you so different? Um, in fact, a lot of people don't even know what to do with that stability and that non that lack of chaos Correct. because they're so used to a chaotic environment. Oh my God, it's so funny you said that. That they chase the chaos. I was just having a conversation with a couple. They just started dating and uh, they were driving me home and they were having an argument and the guy kept saying, oh, like, you only text me in the morning. You never check on me. You know, the typical, have you eaten? What are you yeah, doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all that. It's like, you don't do that. Why are you not nurturing? And then there was an awkward silence and I'm just there like a fly on the wall. Like what's happening? You know, I have a flair for drama. And then she goes like, shit, this is actually a trauma response. It is. I was so used to someone breadcrumbing me that now I don't even know how to love with no bound because I'm so used to being breadcrumbed. I'm programmed to only think that way. And now it's showing up in my new relationships. And that was just like a... It is. You know, God it's so damn. crazy because the one thing that I want to really push out a lot mm. is mental health mm. for men. Mm. It's something that I've been in a, I've been in a very... There's one friend of mine who's going to be excited by this ad episode. You know who, the one who told you you're the African Andrew Tate. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but it's, it's really critical. Yeah. Because men, we are not nurtured to chase mental health. Mm. as a possibility. True. It, it's not even on our wish list. True. For most men. In for 99% of men. In fact, for men in your category, and I use your your generation, your age group, yeah. even saying out loud yeah. feels like a weakness. Yes. Yeah. And it doesn't mean therapy. No. You know, it doesn't mean you have to go for therapy. Be, and, and Okay, no. two things. Going for therapy doesn't mean you have a problem. And mental health doesn't always mean it's therapy. True. 
even just mm. talking about your problems. Take me to church. <laughs> and I'm a victim of this. Mm. I have every single thing that has seemed beyond me or beyond my capacity. Mm. Later on, be a short while or a long while later, I found that I actually had the resources or the people around me that could have removed that problem at an instant. True. An instant. Whether it's the most trivial, most basic human challenges that we have, whether it's housing or money, or which it mostly often is money related, Facts. right? Or even health. Mm -hmm. My girl had a surgery. She had disc surgery, which you know about, yes. the, 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 the disc bulge. Yeah. And we were running around trying to get opinion and all that. It wasn't until two weeks after the surgery, I had a call with a friend I hadn't spoken with for a while. And he is somebody who was super connected. And he is the one that actually introduced me to the minister of the UA Ministry of Health. Okay. Uh, well, chairman of the Ministry of Health, rather, Sheikh Abdullah. And when I got talking about the missus, uh, my, my girl's um, surgery, he's like, why didn't you call me? I could have just Did done they use the cyber knife? This. No, no. This was done. It was done by okay. uh, one of the, the, the leading professor there. Yeah, because I know that they're the only hospital they have, that they have, have a cyber yeah. knife. I wish you asked me too. I used I, to be in healthcare. You know, and he gave he gave me an inside <laughs> scoop about the hospital mm. that we used. And he told me the good things and the bad things about the hospital. Mm. But beyond that as well, he told me about things that could have just been so much easier, headache-free, mm. faster. And he would have just alleviated that stress like that. Imagine. And I just didn't share. And that's one of the most Close recent experiences. Doesn't get fed. Does not get anything. Mm. What happens when Donald Trump goes bankrupt? He calls his bank friends <laughs> and tries to leverage them up. Well, when he claims he never really get went bankrupt. True. When he claims he went bankrupt, <laughs> right? He calls his bank friends. Mm. When people go bankrupt and go broke and go whatever, just I'm, I'm using finance because finance is the most relatable thing, right? True. What do they do? How do they bounce back fast? You don't bounce back fast by being a hard worker. No. You bounce back fast by striking a deal and leveraging what you already have. True. Nobody grows without leverage. And nobody's uh, an island. Nobody. And being having leverage doesn't always mean loans. Leverage could really just mean piggybacking off somebody else's resources. It could be knowledge, connections. Like when I, when I really think about it, like, so Kamal Business Hub, my company that helps people set up companies and all that, right? Mm -hmm. I always let people know, listen, you are not just having a business setup consultant here. Mm. I'm not helping you open your company in Dubai only and get a visa and a salam alaikum. See you once else. every year. Any, don any donkey, go <laughs> go to Kerala. Someone in Kerala in India can do this for you True. in Dubai. You are leveraging off as a business owner, mm. a serial entrepreneur who has made all the mistakes. You're leveraging off my mistakes. You're leveraging off my almost, what, 13 years of being in Dubai, mm. getting drunk with the right people, mm. right? Removing all the bullshit off where not to go and how not to do things. Mm. I focus so much on how not to do things more than how to do things. Because when you- uh, I'm gonna cut you short there. Please, 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 please. That is a giant <laughs> statement. Please, I need you to say it again for the people at the back. Please. <laughs> I focus more on how not to do things mm -hmm. more than how to do things. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is, it's also a bit of an, an open loop where when you make up your mind that you want a blue iPhone, mm -hmm. you're limited to a, a blue, blue iPhone. iPhone. When you make up your mind that you don't want a green iPhone, every the other iPhone color becomes open. True. Now that's only an, that's a, that's a tangible, finite range of options for a product. You're but seeing the, Tony in his true element of being able to break down things that a five-year-old can understand. Proceed. <laughs> you're special. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> But, a real, but you get what I mean. I do. And that literally now, when you translate that into actual options in life and mm -hmm. different things, whether it's in partners and business options, in health, whatever the options are, you find that you have so much more abundance mm -hmm. than that, oh no, it must be the particular way because that's what I wanted True. for so long. Yeah. Okay, I know you've liked BMW for so long, but have you felt the suspension of a Bentley? Have you felt the leather just you hugging you back? The storytelling, everything that goes around there, mm. the head turning on that beautiful green Spectre Rolls Royce. Like, fine, you know of these things, but have you given yourself permission 
to experience and leave that bounded wall so that you've true. created for yourself. Very true. And this again, I'm using materialistic things and, and physical, tangible things, but this really is much more relatable to a mental outlook than anything Abundant else. Mindset. Because that's what that now fulfills true. the reality. The gas that drives the engine. Absolutely. Whoa. Absolutely. I don't think I've ever said this on any podcast. <laughs> I'm dumbfounded. Like I am literally <laughs> out of words. I'm just absorbing and enjoying the conversation. And damn, it's been, it's Appreciate been you. real. Appreciate you. Okay. I like to interject the conversation with um, a little bit of convo. I feel like it's important besides connecting with Tony, the soul, yeah. Tony, the person. If I was to look at your phone right now, how many unread DMs do you have? Let's actually find out. <laughs> Are we talking? It could be anything, Instagram or whatever. Instagram. Um, let's actually check it out. Mm -hmm. So, so it doesn't it doesn't say exactly. Okay. But <laughs> they're quite a chunk. <laughs> 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 They're quite at least a couple hundred. A couple hundred. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you can see my emails are right there, 136,000. Whoa. 103 unread. Whoa. Yeah. That's insane. Those are. So if I wanted to catch your attention with like an eye-catchy subject line, what would be the one thing that would make you go ding, ding, ding? And I'm like, okay, I need to pay attention to this. Because clearly there's a lot of noise in there. A right. very cute ass profile picture. Oh, uh, okay. True. I, I mean, mean that, 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 that might sound very, very, <laughs> <laughs> very silly and very materialistic. And but the reality is, looks matter. It is. It looks, is. Now, looks might not keep the attention, but yeah. you know, like I always say, grab with, the attention. Yes, but it, it it gets that turn. Correct. Now, what you now do to keep the turn, that head turn, is now secondary. True. But you must first get the eye to turn, and Correct. in this case, it could be the mind eye or the actual physical eye, right? True. So, of course, the number of things, again, it doesn't really matter because as a business person, I try to answer as many DMs as possible, mm. if not everyone. And especially now that I have my own personal driver, I'm so much more productive and so much more capable of doing things that I would just not be able to. Because when you sit, when you drive for hours or you go meetings back and forth and you eventually go home and you have 60, 70, 80 DMs to reply, you, you just get discouraged, like, there. fuck that, exactly. tomorrow. But then when you're free, you attend to them one by one. Correct. And then I want to, I just wanted to juxtapose something in there. So I worked for an insurance company and this was the first time where they had me like manage my calendar. Before that, I was just like a salesperson. You have a target and unless you do it, I really don't have questions asked. Right. Yeah. So this was the first time where they even told me like factor in travel time, factor in travel time. And then this one time, I think I had an yeah. injury and I fell and one of my friends was like, I'll just get my, my, my brother to drop you if you really have to go for the meeting because I'd been chasing for this meeting like for five months. And the guy finally said, I'll give you 15 minutes. I was like, do or die, broken knee, let's go. Neck like let's, this, Yeah, let's going. go. It'll probably sell the story, you know? This is how committed I am. <laughs> and in that 25 minutes, I got so much done. It's not a luxury, it's a necessity. It is not. You're buying back your time. I swear. Because like you said, I don't want to be sitting in the comfort of my couch with my Kellogg's bowl, just about to dive into my favorite podcast and still want to engage in noise. It's, um, it's one of the lies that we tell ourselves mm. to do everything by ourselves. Mm. It takes a while, though. It takes a lot of work to give yourself permission to let go. Mm. But the reality is once you do. Mm -hmm. you realize the gift that you could have just given yourself. And it ties back to what you said about someone who's been in Dubai for so long, but has never even taken the initiative. They're probably literally taking the metro in front of a car showroom. Yes. But they've never, for years, day by day, mm. morning and evening, they're just going to that metro station. They've never said, today let me just be wild and go and ask for a test drive. Yes, and it's free. And it's free. It's fucking free. All a state of mind. It's all, all a state of mind. Was there a particular event in your life that made you very passionate about men, mental health? And I yes. like the fact that mental health has the word men in it. Yes, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Do you want to walk I had us a, it? I had a traumatic marriage. Mm. It was my fault. Shut the cameras! Amari's <laughs> finally taking ownership. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, I'm back. Okay. All right. It was everything that was a causality or the catalyst was on me. Mm. Right? Now we can always point fingers at people and do whatever. I'm never that person that points fingers at anybody. There's always three pointing back. There you go, right? And whatever the other person's outcome or the other person's reaction, yes, that's on them. Mm. But let's be honest, you cannot refute the fact that there was causality. True. Right? The action begets the reaction. Mm. Right? And beyond that point, I went through several major stressful ex- moments. Okay. Right? Where I literally saw my immune system and my body shut down. For real. It was 49 degrees outside. Okay. One day. Okay. I was shivering. I was shivering like it's minus 50 without jacket. Whoa. X-ray done. No problem. Blood test. No problem. Piss test. No problem. Feces test. No problem. Doctor was like, an MRI will take time. Or those run an MRI on you because that will probably give a more idea on your, mm. you know, the st- so they were literally using elimination yeah. to identify the yeah. problem. And the doctor was like, this is a f- old older guy, he's almost 70. He's like, Tony, I don't need to do an MRI to know it's stress. Whoa. He gave me an injection. Whoa. My aunt, my, my parents are not around. My, I, I, that was when I first separated with my ex-wife. Mm. Uh, poor girl, poor soul. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to laugh. No, no, but it's, yeah. it's, it's worthy of laughing because honestly, it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, and beyond that point, when my aunt came by the hospital, uh, she took my phone. I had three. Then I had three. No, I had four phones. Tony. Four bloody phones. And how right. are you expecting to avoid stress? Listen, let's not go there, okay? Okay. And and he gave me an injection. I slept for nineteen and a half hours. One nine. Nineteen hours. I've never slept that long in my life before, nor before, nor after. I woke up, brand. That moment I woke up, I made up my mind the next day and I said, and I realized that you wreck a moment. The fire is always going to burn. The world is always burning. Whether you actually put the holes, take a hose and put the fire out or not, there's always a new fire. The world will never stop demanding from you. If you don't put yourself and house in order, you will not even be able to be around long enough to keep putting out fires. And that in itself was the moment when I started scheduling naps Mm. in my calendar every single day from 1 p.m. or 2 p.m. to 4, 1 p.m. to 3, depending on the day. Some days, of course, you can move it around. I blocked my calendar where it says nap for six months. Now, I may or may not nap, but I I had to deal with myself. Now, some days were difficult because there's still a lot going on. And that was a day, those are the days when. I didn't really delegate enough yet. I didn't have enough staff yet. It was me doing a lot of things. Mm-hmm. To, I was trying to be an octopus, Mr. Jack of all trade, 500,000 hands, which I only had two. Four phones. Four phones. Mm-hmm. And three of them had two SIM cards inside. Gee. So, I'm finished. And two WhatsApp, right? Literally two WhatsApps in there, right? Jeez. So beyond that point as well, I just realized, what are you doing? What are you doing? And the worst, and, and, and the thing that actually made me realize it is, you're doing all of this and you're still not the richest man on earth. Neither are you happy. And I realized, now don't get me wrong, the wealthiest people I'm touched with, I'm, I'm privileged and fortunate enough to have lots of super wealthy mentors. Some names that are mentioned, like, oh, what? Mm. No, right? As close friends, mentors, buddies that people that get drunk with. And mm. I mean, I don't do drugs or anything, but people were, if, we're, if I was a drug addict, people that would probably do cocaine on the, on the stripper's, <laughs> on the stripper's <laughs> ass with, right? Those level up. It's but again, true. these are multi global. Leaders. Leaders. They're literally two, spheres of influence. Yes. In two two digits, billion, three digit billion figures oh. in, 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 in their companies, it's right? Hot in here. And these are people that actually make out time to watch Star Wars with me, mm. right? And, and a lot their of, time is money. Are you kidding me? If uh-huh. I, one of my friends, uh, one of my mentors, Philip, uh, his wife came to me once. I didn't even know who he was when we first met. We were just chatting. Mm. He, I think he just vibed with my authenticity. And Got whether it. I knew who he was, it was that I didn't know who he was, it didn't matter because like it just vibe. The first time we met, we watched Lord of the Rings. Wow. Three hours together. Then we planned, uh, and I was single at the time, or after my divorce. So we planned uh, a Lord of the Rings weekend, where we now watched the Lord of the Rings 2 and Lord of the Rings 3. So I, went his, I was in his house for about 12 hours, Whoa. six, seven hours of the movie, and then chilling, barbecue eating. Mm. And he was just pouring knowledge on me. And I realized, 
the wealthiest people in the world actually have some of the best work ethic, first of all. Mm. None of these, uh, oh, you're so rich, you don't do anything. That's just bullshit. That's true. The guys who are doing nothing are not as wealthy as they could be. Mm. They might be wealthy. And again, don't get me wrong, because somebody's worth a billion doesn't mean they cannot be worth two. It's true. Because they're worth 10. What about the guy that has 200, right? So the work ethic is there. The efficiency, of course, now complements the work ethic to deliver incredible results and then leverage. There's so many factors, right? I made up my mind that, so you mean it is possible to be so capable, so efficient, and not lose your fucking mind? Wow. And that was it for me. Wow. That was, and I learned, one of my mentors, Philip, was like, he has over 75,000 companies, over 75,000 companies, <laughs> how, at least, how, how at you, least. Wow. At least, right? That's like and a whole map. 100%. And one of my other mentors, Philip, he was like, I was like, how, how do you run so many companies and how handle all this thing? He's like, Tony, it's very simple. I said, what do you mean it's very simple? Like, that's a, <laughs> those are not the words I was expecting from you. It was like, you find somebody you like mm. and you find somebody you trust and you give them a piece of the cake to manage that shit and they will guard it with their life. And you will never have to work aside from just nurturing that person. Delicate. Literally. And you literally become a big brother, a partner, a mm -hmm. friend, you just make sure that your duty becomes nurturing their relationships. And that's why you now tend to find that a lot of billionaires are always socializing mm -hmm. because they're creating mm -hmm. nurturing environments to nurture the relationships that are responsible for their major kickers. True. And you know the reason why some of us are scared to step into those rooms is because we always step into them with an agenda. Yes. It's always, I want to ask for money. I'm raising money. I'm doing this. I'm doing bruh. that. Like, bruh, that's the fastest way to turn off a ask rich person. Ask a billionaire for $20 <laughs> and that's the last time you'll see his face. It's true. Because beyond that point, two things. One, you've established that you're not smart. You're not resourceful enough to actually use him for his capacity. True. And you're wasting the resources. You are taking a bazooka to kill a fly. And using it like a pen knife. A nuclear bomb Whoa. to kill a fly. Yo. And he will feel very disrespectful. And again, it would never occur to you that that's the mentality, right, of how they're processing things. Mm. But you would just establish to yourself that, first of all, you're not resourceful enough. Every single person that I've asked for something, I've never asked for something for them. When they've brought something up of interest, mm -hmm. either they've asked me for something or they've created an opportunity where they've seen my inclination towards a certain proficiency and they brought something up and I've said, okay, you know what? Let me actually now give value here. Or I've seen something that they're pretty hooked on. Mm -hmm. I do a little bit hook bait release where I put the little bait, bait hook release, and then they hook and then I pull, pull it and back. I release. But in rest, are, okay, I know you're interested in this. Did you know you can do this, this, this? It's true. You've just conveyed knowledge. It's true. You've conveyed proficiency. That's it. Step away. And Their subconscious does because they, people like that mm. move at the speed of light. Mm. They don't, they're not going to go back and sit down for 12 hours and then or two or 20 days and be like, oh, Tony said something that was cool. No, in that moment, they're like, oh shit, why did you do this? Ding. Immediately, you're striking a deal. I've seen people who've raised funds in three-minute conversations. And I know people who are still chasing two years later and they've never seen a dollar. 100%. 100%. It's just as simple as that. And these are things that are not taught enough in school. Oh, never. Now, you see, this <laughs> is why mental health for me is something that education is so critical for me. Education mm. is something that I want to I wanna reform. Mm. I love... I need I to think, transform education. Uh, have you heard of this thing called the Johari window? No. So I'm, I'm a bit, I love reading like theory and stuff. I think you've noticed that already. Yes. So it's basically a box with four quadrants. Okay. And it, in one quadrant, it's what Tony knows and I know. In another quadrant, it's what Tony knows that I don't know. So I've seen this, but I, didn't, I, I, I forgot the name. I, I, didn't, I didn't know the name. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then just for those who don't know, the third quadrant is... What well, you know Tony doesn't know, exactly. and what Tony doesn't know, you don't know. Exactly. Yeah. And I feel like sometimes we're so stuck in the first box. Big time. And the biggest, I'll call them the juggernauts, mm. are those who are very comfortable in the, what well, you don't know and I don't know, and we combine to, gen to fix That's that. That's where the magic happens. That's the magic. Uh, this is, somebody made a comment, right? If you want to be rich... What did he say? Let me try to remember exactly what he said. If you want to be rich, be smart or be competent. Mm -hmm. 
If you want to be wealthy, be incompetent. Mm. Because when you are useless, you would make it your duty to find the person that can solve that problem. It's true. If you don't know how to cook soup, when your chef leaves, you're not going to jump in the kitchen and waste your time. You're going to find the new chef. Correct. And you've replaced that problem now with a new problem solver. True. Not when you are trying to now go and spend two hours in the mm. kitchen. Meanwhile, those two hours could be used with your creative energy to do many other things. More it's useful, true. more creative. But it's the same reason why Mark Zuckerberg has a closet that looks exactly the same. He doesn't want to waste... Eliminate that. He doesn't want to waste time making the decision on what I want to wear. Honestly, you know, there are many things that there's there are many things that I know that I am going to be a billionaire. I know this for sure. It's, Come just, a, it's on. just a numbers game. It's a numbers game. It's a matter of time. Facts. And even the way I shop, I find something I like and I buy all the colors. Mm. Consistency. That's me with shoes. It's very simple. <laughs> Zero headache. So the color now determines, or the outfit, or the t-shirt, or the shirt, or the suit now determines which color I'm going to use. But the same quality, same expression. So many things are just consistent. And with that, you've covered looking good, which oh is good God. business. 100%. And you've been able to eliminate the time you'd waste making other decisions. Billion percent. Wow. So it makes life much easier. Whoa. Damn. Mm. I'm just a sponge today. I'm here to absorb. You're this so is not special. about me. You're so silly. But I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's talk about a trend. You know, it is probably this is going to come out after Valentine's. So it is the weekend of love and trends and all these things. Uh, of course, from a healthcare perspective, because that's my most recent experience, we have Ozempic that everyone is jumping on right now to lose weight. What, what do you that's think awesome. about Ozempic? Is this drug that was made for diabetic people? I think I heard about this word and this name, but I didn't yes, realize what it was. It's, it's a fad right now. Like, uh, But people, you know how like originally Viagra was made for heart problems? Then they discovered later that one of the side effects was a prolonged hard-on. Uh -huh. And then they were like, and wait. They tweaked that. They tweaked that. And they were like, we can make more money with the hard-ons than the heart disease. Amen to that. <laughs> Okay, let's Amen go to that. <laughs> Everyone's happy with heart. Exactly. Hard on, so, hey. so Ozempic <laughs> was now for diabetes. Okay. But people have realized that it's an accelerator when it comes to weight loss. And people are losing shit tons of weight overnight. Which, of course, has some prolonged consequences. But you do realize how we're living in a vain world and everybody wants to look perfect now. So I think people within the line of work of weight loss, this is their season. Yes. You know, but some of the consequences of what we do right now, because of course, microwave generation, we want everything in an instant. The consequences will only come later. Yes. So similarly, um, how do you feel about trends? Like, would Tony be the kind of person who jumps on a trend? Oh, and no. I mean, see, that's a very interesting question because oh, thank you. I don't have a, I don't have an an insecure inferiority or superiority complex towards mm. trends. I just generally am too busy to even know what the <laughs> hell they are, right? That's one. But second of all, I realize that trends are beautiful mm. when it comes to marketing. And I say Facts. this because when you have trends, it already has preset where everybody is for you. I'll give you a classic example. Just capitalize on it. You know, I didn't even know Tyler sang the song Water but I probably had it like a hundred times in a day just from the videos. Make me sweat. And then one day I caught it in the middle. We have middle. a singer here, guys. We have a singer. Oh God, only in the shower. I am uh -huh. tone deaf AF. <laughs> so I heard the last part of the song and I was like, hmm, this beat sounds familiar, but I had no idea. And I can see how that has even created more visibility for Afrobeats. Like right now, if you really want to get a song that would hook, it kind of has to be a trend or a challenge on any of the platforms, right? Yeah. And TikTok's now has sells more songs than Spotify and the Correct. rest of the guys. Correct. So I do see the benefit of trends. Oh, for sure. But at the same time, there are some people whose literal existence is just hopping from one but, trend to the But again, to the that's other. A, and that's totally fine because, I mean, mm. what to, to each his own, right? True. But trends are powerful because it's human nature. Mm -hmm. Herd mentality is human nature. Nothing wrong. It's not about good or bad. It's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. But think about trends is somebody always starts them. Mm. And somebody always follows them. Correct. It's very simple, right? And beyond that point, it really goes to how are you how are you maximizing the trend? So even if you're jumping on a trend, so the people would go on trend, oh, let me just go on this trend and just make it better. And but then you're you're, you're tying your existence to tweaking somebody else's, you know, 
trailblazing. Mm -hmm. If you trailblaze yourself, that's another thing, but it doesn't always mean to be successful for you. True. A lot of times, piggybacking and leveraging is a lot easier. True. Then, so for example, one of the marketing schemes... Sorry. One, no, that's fine. Mm -hmm. One of the marketing schemes that we have right now is for Kamal Business Hub is we utilize influencers and creators who have already created an audience in Dubai or mm -hmm. they create the personality that shows they live in Dubai or whatever. And it's kind of, I, I now capture their story, their story into a little, what, their, their movement and the journey into a little storytelling form and now drag and funnel all of that towards myself. Mm -hmm. So instead of me going, I can go and start creating my own videos. I can do that True. very easily and I know it do well. I've True. proven it over time. But a lot of times it's also more efficient mm. to leverage off trends. Goes back so, to what we just said about efficiency. Efficiency. Why do you want to go and reinvent the wheel when the wheel is rolling in front of you? You know, inches and rims and everything nice. I mean, you're cold and that's True. nice. But to a large degree as well, I mean, Mozart, everybody, before you even create your own trend, you must be also willing and able to follow a few. Correct. To understand, because when you're creating trends, you're creating something for a herd of people. And you're making something better. Yes. So you got to be able to know that thing that you're making good enough. True. And meaning you spend time with it and you've consumed it. It's become one with you before you can. And I'm not talking about a particular dance move or a song. Mm. No, but it's merely just a concept of actual how trends are created. You don't trailblaze without knowing your audience. And you can't know your audience without knowing what they're consuming. Correct. So you have to first consume and see, like, interesting. I want to make you a better server. soup. How are you going to make me better soup if you haven't tasted my soup? I see no lie. So I have no, a lot of people have superiority complexes. Mm. Bullshit. It's just insecurity being projected. Um, where they feel, oh, I'm not going to go on a trend because it's a trend. I will not wear a Van Cleef <laughs> earring black because others have it. Okay, stop breathing because the time I'm going to breathing. Okay. You want to not be on a trend? Okay, don't breathe. Eight billable are breathing. Don't eat. It's too common. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't sleep. Restaurants are busy yeah. every day. That's a of trend. Course, they're eating. Yeah. No problem. Mm -hmm. Die. Die. True. So they're, they're, they're very secure and insecure relationships with mm. these things. But I am the capitalist that would always capitalize on trends. Mm. That's where I stand. Let the trends roll. I don't need to know if I know about it now or later. I will capitalize on those. Is it Ryan Reynolds? Okay. Who, would it, who is it? I think Ryan Reynolds, right? Mm -hmm. Who does something called, is it hyper fast advertising? Mm -hmm. Where he goes on trends mm -hmm. and he's built such a credible sets of companies, mm -hmm. right? By just jumping on extremely high trending waves mm -hmm. for a very short period of time, sells a gigantic quantity of products True. onto the next. If, I think even Gary Vaynerchuk started like that. And then of course it morphed into something bigger. But the origin was that drop shipping, drop selling and everything. And then Absolutely. he became the coach and the master. And now everybody goes to him to do the same Absolutely. thing. Interesting. Wow. <laughs> so we recently had a very interesting conversation. You posted something and I was like, for me, you're like the epitome of an alpha male. Honestly speaking, from the way you carry yourself, how you speak, you just ooze alpha. And then you put up a post about one of my favorite characters getting married. Chuck Bass. <laughs> Ed Westwick, correct. <laughs> and I got to see a softer side of you. Yep. Interesting. So do you find it intimidating? Or what would you tell a man who thinks like showing softness is weakness? That's his problem. Period. He has been lied to. Period. He has been very much lied to. And that... Conflict he has internally mm -hmm. is lying in that particular refusal and denial to allow vulnerability actually come to the surface every now and again. Mm -hmm. And like, just like I answered you in the, in the message, right? Mm -hmm. The true alpha is a person that can and will do whatever the fuck he wants. Facts. That's how I see a true alpha. If I want to dance like a fool in the club, on, a on table? the table, I will do that. True. And I will go home comfortable. Because the truth is, a true alpha, it's less of the ex external and it's more of the internal relationship. Mm. A king doesn't need the village to like his actions or not. I mean, to a certain degree, it does, right? But a king... But he has a final say. He has a final say. And a king, truly, and I, I use the word king very precariously because I don't really mean... I don't mean the tr typical monarch, right? Yeah. I mean the true actual alpha who will be the head of the pack, right? Just to use the word you use. Mm. He has the ability to do whatever the hell he wants... Whether or not he wants to look down at other people, whatever his, you know, origin relationship emotionally is with his actions, that's his problem. True. People differ, but 
him having the ability to know I am going to do, what was it Prince of Persia? Where you can tell I'm a big movie buff. Oh, clearly. Um, <laughs> where he said, where the father said, a true king always considers the counsel of his advisors, but always listens to his heart. True. Right? And that for me is the full on definition. And being an alpha doesn't mean you don't feel fear or pain or vulnerability or empathy. Mm. You have to be, as a human being, you must be comfortable with feeling all mm. these myriad of emotions. I always say, and feel that's what's necessary. Your feelings. Feel them. Feel and that's them. the greatest gift you can have. That's one of the statements that my best friend said like two years ago, and it echoes so deeply in me. Because trust me, when I've tried to run away from my feelings, they've come back and bit me. Oh, for sure. But even it's how they built. You know, feeling your feelings is 50% and owning your fuck up. Mm. Is the other fifty percent? Why are opinion. you shouting? <laughs> in my opinion, true. A true alpha is not afraid to step up to his men on the battlefield and say, "I'm sorry, I fucked up." Mm. But we either go forward together, or we all lose. Facts. And that's just one. That's a military, con you know, example. It could be in many, many things. True, and that's yeah. why they say, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go oh. far, go together. Amen. Whoa, Tony, Amen. I'm definitely going to make you a regular guest on this set. Whether you like it or not, I'm putting it out to the universe. So that they can come and stalk you in the DMs and say, we want to see you sit down with Yvette again. Because I just feel like your, your mind is like infinite. And like you know so much about so many things. And speaking to you, I know you're not a big fan of therapy, but it does feel like therapy. But you know it's ironic? I studied to be an NLP practitioner. No way. Yes way. From when I was 19. Wow. 18 and 19. It was a very serious. Initially, I wanted to use it for seduction. Mm -hmm. That was, for me, it was getting laid. It was women. I'll be honest, I have nothing to hide. The main goal of NLP and all that whoa, gimmick whoa, whoa, and whoa, 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 yes, whoa, whoa. and hypnosis and all this shit was Do you know, I can, for seduction. I can feel that because... I had a very liberal relationship with my mom, yeah. God rest her soul. I, I think like sometimes I was the best mistake she ever made because <laughs> she always said, if it was not for you, I would have never had kids. It's, it wasn't my thing. You, you just happened. Like, you know, she was very liberal with me. And she always told me like, the one gift you can always give yourself is to make sure no man ever fucks you bottom up. Always make sure they fuck you top bottom. The mind is the dime. And it never made sense why at like 19, 20, all the Oprah and Tyra Banks probably got into her head and she said this. But then now as I grow older, I have seen relationships where I probably led with my sexual energy. That's not so. They didn't lead me anywhere. But then where I bring yeah. value and I feel like I have something that makes me stand with or without you. Those are the relationships that keep growing and glowing and gravitate to things that are beyond my imagination. I mean, I personally feel that's the same thing that happened here. Not like, you know, we're going to go that direction. <laughs> but the whole point is, you probably, when I stalked you and I saw your profile, and I was like, bro, I love what you're doing. Keep on keeping on. And you're like, mm, just probably another person. And then maybe the consistency of how I portray myself, how I carry myself. Big time. That's what made you think, hmm, this girl kind of has something. For sure. If I had never seen your podcast, we ran into each other. We met each other at uh, Chop this, House, at Chop House yes. right? That was the first time we met. Yeah. And if I had not seen and who you had conveyed and portrayed on your podcast and online, I would never have, have engaged. Because even, even the, I, 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 I'm not a snobbish person, you know this. True. I'm a very, you and know. And I came to you and I said, I know you. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> oh shit, from where? You know? Um, I'm a very accessible person, very approachable. Yeah. I, if I was if I was a woman, I'll be a bitch though. Hey! I'll be that ten who is friendly to you, but you can't keep her attention for longer than a minute. Mm. Right? I know this for sure. Mm. And even because as a man, I am that way to women. Right? So for women, if I was a woman, it'd be worse mm. for sure. You know. Mm. But beyond that point as well, I say that because it's got to be of value. But again, why would you? want somebody who doesn't value you as well. Correct. Right? Why would you want somebody who's going to invest in you without valuing you? Because eventually that investment is going to fade away. Mm. So the fact that I have the respect and the fact that you have portrayed yourself to be that person that I could definitely resonate with and like, yeah, fuck with this peeps. Mm. That in itself to me is even more valid because now it's giving me more incentivization to open up more, to be yeah. more approachable, more Correct. assistive. 
you know, I answer your messages very fast. True. I you mean, know? we're here now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so there are lots of people that just come into your life and you're like, okay, interesting, nice. True. But then they just fade away. Yeah. There's no real actual impact. True. And then there are others who actually give good impact and True. like, okay, this is. Yeah, makes sense. I fuck with this, yeah. And I firmly believe, and this goes to everyone who says, oh, like I know people in closed rooms who are amazing and notable for certain things that they do. But it's nowhere out there. And they're like, no, I don't want to be known. I don't want to be this. Yeah. I'm going to do this. Wing, 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 all Bullshit. that stuff. To those people, I want to say one thing categorically. Best known is better than best. This I stole from the lady Mayoa. Best <laughs> known is better than best. You could be the best anything in this world. But if nobody knows you. You don't exist. You don't exist. It's so funny you say that. My favorite quote lately was Anna Schwarz nigga's quote where he says, work your ass off mm -hmm. and then advertise. Mm. That shit hit me like a bulldozer. Damn, you just did work the same thing to me Work your ass now. off and then advertise because nobody knows you worked your ass off. It never existed. Mm. That shit hit me hard. hard. And this is now coming from somebody who has been at the top of the totem pole of all his games. Mm. And when you really think about it, everybody that we actually fuck with and resonate with, they advertise. True. Otherwise, we would never... People look at Hollywood, people look at all the movies, all the shows and everything that we actually enjoy. It's because they advertise. It's America true. is one of the greatest countries in the world one at big marketing. Advertising. True. And marketing beats... Perception beats reality every, every time. time. It's true. In fact, there's certain times in the past, you know, when I've been cash broke. Mm. I'm broke. And people didn't believe it. Because of the perception. I can, I can attest to that there right you go. in this Like you see, you see that meme? Broke. <laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah, broke. broke like, bougie, bougie broke. broke. You know? Like, it was, I, I, what do you mean? Get the fuck out of here. I was on a phone call with my friend today when I was coming here. And I was like, the one I told you who called you the Andrew Tate. Yeah. African Andrew Tate. And... <laughs> I sent her like my bank balance because she, we kept getting interrupted. I was like, yeah, there's something that I need to sort out and deal with. And I was like, wow, like this is the brokest I've been in my life. But this is the most fulfilled I am because I know I am doing what I love. Yes. Unapologetically. Oh my God, yes. That is such a powerful state of being. And it's so crazy because I know it might seem like a lot is going crazy, but that state is usually often followed by abundance. Mm. Of course, the work ethic matters to so keep yeah. the abundance. Thank you. But keep that work ethic and trust me, abundance is just hiding by the corner, waiting for you to come You're out really the fucking door. <laughs> and just boom. <laughs> Woo! I'm here. Jump inside of you. <laughs> Honestly. Tony, I can't thank you enough. Honestly. And I'm definitely putting it out here. You're definitely coming back. I will. And thank you, you so break. much for gracing our new set and agreeing to be my first guest on this segment. Thank you. I am your very mind, honored and privileged. I your love mind it. is the dime. We thank need to you. clone you or like bottle up <laughs> how you think because <laughs> it's so different, but it resonates deeply. All I'm going to say thank is you. stay true and stay you. Thank you very much. I'll do that. Well, do just that. this has been the first edition of When We Win. Thank you to our first guest, Tony. Appreciate and it. Until we come your way next time, stay true and stay you. Bye. <laughs>